October the 23rd. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. I tell you to call in like I've been doing for a decade, but the hackers actually got me blocked. I can't even live stream anymore. What's the world coming to? Let's get after it. We got all the usual suspects, the crazies are out and in full dress again today. We got Jim Smith from the United Kingdom, University of Portsmouth. We got the crazy International Atomic Energy Agency <laughs> stories. They're going to be the first stories we're going to cover. Uh, that creature right there, that should be in the haunted movies. <sighs> and there's no easy way to tell the story. International Atomic Energy Agency officials Fukushima ongoing discharge of the treated treated it might be interesting to note that that's the official pictures of the fuel puller reactor 4 and that's the official picture of reactor 4 <laughs> the odds of them being in the fuel pool 100 feet above the stump they got there is zero silch there's no possibilities Nobody bothered telling the International Atomic Energy Agency that. And I guess this is why they kept the uh, population in the stupor over nuclear for so 80 years. <laughs> That's the average, any person, literally, <coughs> a stranger, any stranger. What did they do with the fuel? I don't know, I don't know, why would I know? They'd be like insulted. And they call it treated. You, you can't treat something that is gone. Everything was gone after day six. That's two of the four reactors. It's, the, whole, the whole story is mad. It's it's mad. How, how the hell did it ever get this crazy? And not only did they get away with it once, now they're doing the second batch of the treated. Treated. Like the water that they're pouring over the reactor stump, the reactor's gone, the fuel pools are gone. Oh, man. <laughs> you got to bring back the old days where we used to burn them at the stakes. We've got no way for it unless we uh, up the ante. Into the sea ended on as planned on Monday. Uh huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, really, eh? That's interesting. The, the, did I mention the buildings are not even there anymore? They were gone after six days? This is 12 and a half years later. How come 12 and a half years later, they're claiming that they're releasing water for the first time in 12 and a half years? How, how does that actually work? we got a great story for everybody tonight, believe it or not, when they settle down. <sighs> Uh, into the sea ended as planned on Monday, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Why the hell are they even in the equation? Not a regulatory agency. They don't have authority. They can't compel a country to do anything. They don't have sovereignty over any country. They're not a regulatory agency. They're a coordinator of misery. They're a large, the world's largest misery machine, I think is appropriate. Their first safety monitoring mission. You might think, well, Dana, what about the military machine? Have you met this friggin' industry yet? You got any idea how dangerous this is now? 80 years of no checks and balances whatsoever? No incentive to not to be evil in the most evil industry on the planet? You got any idea how late it is? How far down the hole we actually are? The first, uh, I'll get you up to speed, hopefully. Their first safety and monitoring mission, the International Atomic Energy is doing their first safety and monitoring mission after almost 13 years. <laughs> Praise be the International Atomic Energy Agency. Since the release began two months ago, well, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but this happened 12 and a half years ago. There is nothing left. The reactor cores, the fuel pools were at the top of the buildings. I don't know if you noticed it, but there's no tops left to the buildings. There's no nothing left. They should have just razzed the little stumps they got there all the way to the ground. Fukushima Daiichi started releasing treated and diluted and sugar-coated. It's like three grams of sugar. That's the latest from a South Korean professor of nuclear and quantum engineering. Surely he wouldn't lie. And the operator that shouldn't exist. The reason TEPCO exists is so you'll blame TEPCO instead of the nuclear industry where to blame firmly belongs and the universities, schools of mass destruction that help them get there in the first place. They had to hide the problem because they were the first ones to identify it were your universities. So only hire evil for 80 years and guess what happens? You spoil it for the other 8 million species. Said the release of a second 7,800 ton batch of treated wastewater, and I apologize that I'm doing this since July the 13th, because that's what they're feeding us nonstop, same propaganda, with little nuances that are important. With his daily seawater sampling results, daily, fully meeting the safety standards. Japan, the country that killed the planet, causing three reactors to melt. So it's really interesting. They're avoiding the word melt and the D-O-W-N word. That's what's going on. They're avoiding that combinations. Three reactors. Uh, what's interesting is they don't count reactor four. Apparently, that's not a nuclear meltdown to your right. What is it? When you lost the reactors and all the fuel pools at the top of the buildings, what should I call it, I wonder? I'd like some clarity from the International Atomic Energy Agency on that, if you don't mind. <coughs> Causing three reactors to melt. I've never heard that until this year, by the way. To melt. I'm surprised you put that word there. They just say whatever they feel like. And spew... These are nuclear meltdowns. These are catastrophic events and it's spewed large amounts of radiation. And that's it? That's all you're going to tell us? There's nothing else to go with it? That's the end of the story? That's what you got? <coughs> this is reactor three, by the way. It's up there somewhere. And so is the fuel pools. They're, they're up right up there, too. They're falling back down. It's not going to be good. The plume on April 7, 2011, which is 26 days after the earthquake, 21 days after the last reactor melted, or melt. I'm not even allowed to say melted. I'm only, I'm only allowed to say melt. Google's algorithm will catch that and... I'll fight to get 200 views for the most important story in human history that we've been doing for over a decade straight. The plume covers the entire planet in 21 days. And it never goes away. And it never stops coming out. Think of an invisible... Think of a, a, a snowstorm. And the snowstorm takes 21 days... And after 21 days, it covers the entire planet in that model in the bottom. Now, this snowstorm that covers the entire planet in 21 days never stops snowing. It snows forever. It snows and snows from 400 facilities worldwide. It snows every day. Now, call it radiation. You can't see it or smell it or hear it or feel it or taste it or perceive it then you're dealing with the facts. You have to think of it as a snowstorm, and you have to consider that each atom is a motor, has its own motor. It pulses energy at the speed of light every second. That's a motor. In every sense of the word. Name me something else with that particular attribute.
and it poisons and kills everything in increments over decades. And guess what? We're decades into it. Highly contaminated cooling water applied to the damaged reactors. No, the highly contaminated water is not applied. Water is applied. Then it's highly contaminated. Has leaked. Let me check the buildings again. I'm a little confused. Does it leak or just pour right out of that thing? I think anybody that said Fukushima was leaking should be held accountable, should lose their degrees <coughs> and all their teeth and whatever hand they wiped their arse with. Has leaked continuously into building basements and mixed with the groundwater. Well, there's not much left, is it? You know, a plume covered the entire planet in 21 days. Did I mention that? Does that even matter anymore? Anybody who says the word leaked shouldn't be allowed to be a person. The release of the treated wastewater, and calling it wastewater, this is a lethal dose for two liters, if you only include beta. But if you include alphas, neutrons, and gammas, and x-rays by proxy, then it's more than lethal by the liter. Number 2.2 sieverts per liter. So if you take a gallon of it and put it at a subway station, everybody walks past it for a million years, will drop dead that day, if not, if not that hour. That's what multiple sieverts means. Three sieverts is a lethal dose. And every liter has at least three sieverts in it. You can't put it in tanks. It's ludicrous to suggest you can. And you can't filter it. Check my playlist and you'll find dedicated videos with documentation for all of these assertions to get you up to speed and educate it. China banned all imports of Japanese seafood the day the release began, August the 24th. That's the official story. <clears throat> seafood. Now, they banned the food, from, like everybody else, from 14 prefectures for a decade. China still has a ban on the food from the land. See, the new, con the new narrative that the only thing that got out of the buildings that don't even exist anymore... is 2.2 grams. The only thing that got out of there is 2.2 grams of tritium. It's equal to taking 16, 116.6666666 of that one gram coin and dumping it into the ocean each year. That's the official story of what they're going to do. Is, and they're only talking about tritium instead of the enormous absurd amount of plutonium and uranium fission products and all their daughters, daughters rather of the uranium. So the industry it decided to pretend that doesn't exist and that no matter how many people wake up, they don't care. They're just going to regurgitate their narrative everywhere you go and you won't be able to have a conversation with anybody. But we live in a different time literally in a different time. I mean, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. They disappeared that and claimed it's 22 million. I'll show you that coming up. I would say the first two batches of releases went well. No issues were observed, says, um, I can't even pronounce her name. Lloydy Everett. International Atomic Energy Agency's Deputy Director General and the Head of the Department of Nuclear Security and Safety, the head of it, told a Tokyo news conference. She said she visited the Fukushima Daiichi on Friday for a first-hand look. Well, where's the pictures? Like, really, where's the pictures of her visiting Fukushima? Wouldn't that be like a something to, to back it up? Now, she's trying to convince you, and for the majority of the population, she already has, that the buildings don't look like that, that they're perfect. They're dreamy, even. 
And that's her to the right of him, but not way over there, which I thought it was. Turns out it's not. Uh, Everett's visit came on the heels of Marine, now it's the first time I heard of her, by the way, of a Marine sampling mission by another international atomic energy agency team that includes scientists, which is quite the stretch, from China, South Korea, of all places, and Canada, degenerate Canada. She said, and I'm Canadian, so I apologize, obviously. She said all participants in that mission said their activities went well. I covered some of that yesterday. She did not say whether the Chinese scumbag, uh, I'm sorry, scientists acknowledged the safety of the release. Well, that's quite an interesting statement, isn't it? Because they're promoting the tritium fable along with South Korea and Taiwan. And Japan are all acting as one to promote that to the Asian community. And it looks like they succeeded. Hundreds of thousands of people are protesting tritium <laughs> instead of nuclear meltdowns. Will have an eligible impact on the environment, marine life, and human health. Uh, they're not. They're not a regulatory agency. But they're put on a pedestal as if they're the ultimate regulatory industry. By all the goblins, I mean journalists on the planet. Tepco has said it plans to release thirty-one thousand two hundred tons of treated water by the end of March, twenty twenty-four which would empty only 10 tanks out of the 1,000, the majority of them are really small tanks, because of the continued production of, and every time I say the word, I hate myself, wastewater at the plant. So the discharge is unavailable. This is the government of Japan and TEPCO, which was nationalized right away, so it's the government of Japan says the discharge is unavoidable because wastewater storage tanks at the plant will be full next year. They built all the tanks in 2013. Tanks were built to manipulate you. They needed to come up with a better solution. And so they said, well, there is nothing else. All we can do is dump it in the ocean. Because, you know, frig the ocean. Who cares about the ocean? But the problem is the reactors are gone. The tritium, which is what they're talking about, you can't read the signal because of the signal from the biggest byproduct of the meltdowns is curium isotopes. And you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for the plutonium, which is named after the devil appropriately. International Atomic Energy Agency official says Fukushima ongoing discharge of the treated radioactive wastewater is going well. And look at that freaking Medusa right there, will you? That's supposed to be it, the creature from the International Atomic Energy Agency. Never smiled a day in her life a bit. Look at it. She's like, I'll get your name after, buddy. We'll get rid of you. International Atomic Energy Agency officials in Japan for the first safety and monitoring mission since the release began two months ago. Correct me if I'm wrong, the buildings are actually gone. So it's been releasing for 12 and a half years. <clears throat> this is a 16, I think this is the 16 day model. I'll let you know from France. It's shown around 10 million becquels a cubic meter. Uh, yeah, this is the 31-day model, 32-day model. Covers the entire planet in 20 days and suffocates the rest of it in 32. So in 32 days, you've lost the planet. And the model is not based on those reactors that are missing, no, the, the, the model is based on venting. So when you put uh, four decades of reactor cores that were at the top of the building in two fuel pools, which is eight to 10 reactor cores, and the same thing for reactor three, the same for thing for reactor two, the same thing for reactor f one, they're all missing. 
Now, officially, they got the fuel out of the pools. <laughs> Industry is absolute savage, eh? And they don't got to worry about anybody. There's nobody going to call them out. There's no media going to challenge that false narrative. There's no university on the entire planet will challenge that narrative. There's, in fact, there's no academic, any discipline will challenge that narrative. Causing three reactors to melt like it's a popsicle or something. It's like it's irrelevant. The wasp came in, got the sugar, and everybody was happy, Dana. You know? There was three grams of sugar, you know. That's all that got out of the buildings, according to a South Korean professor of nuclear and quantum engineering on July the 13th, which set the stage for that narrative of tritium that International Atomic Energy Agency is a void saying in these uh, stories for the last two weeks or so. Refused to say, and they have originally, right? Japanese Prime Minister Kishida, the current moron, in his policy speech Monday, renewed his call for China to immediately lift the ban on Japanese seafood. Right, that's they're playing a game on you. They're not saying remove the ban on food from 14 prefectures, China. No. No. The International Atomic Energy Agency is aware of China's concern. What does that even mean? And who cares what the International Atomic Energy Agency, a subsidy of UN, which is known as the military industrial complex, has to say? Why would you care? When did they own the planet? When did they when did they get titled as the let's keep going for it gets upset? <clears throat> Ex-users respond to Fukushima wastewater as fish, uh, fish samples are collected. Scientists, like it's a stretch to call these, but they, yeah, they got the degree, but that don't make them a scientist. You got to have a humanity behind it. You got to have some attributes of a human. These people don't have that attributes. And those attributes. From Canada, China, and South Korea. Why don't they tell us the names? What could possibly go wrong? Just tell us who they are. Who's these magical people that are determining the fate of humanity in the 8 million species? Have collected fish samples for testing from the water near shithead Fukushima. And don't, we got all the protesters out protesting tritium. Bless their hearts. Instead of holding placards like that and like this. And like that, well, you need placards like that of the fallout. You need to see the reactor so people stop screaming tritium for a few seconds. And you got to acknowledge 14 prefectures were so radioactive, 55 countries banned the food for a decade. That's a pretty good start. I apologize for telling these lies, and, and then at the end of the lie, I have to tell you the truth right away, or I got to go get a shower. Team international scientists collected samples of fish. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Haisa Nanohama port is is on the north end, far away from Fukushima. South of the site, oh, 50 kilometers south of the site of the ruined Fukushima Daiichi towards Tokyo. The water doesn't flow that way, it flows north, right? That's what I meant to say. There's something else coming up. Uh, ruined, ruined, ruined. Does that, ruined. Does, did they just say that, is that me? The ruined Fukushima Daiichi plant. Uh, does that look ruined? Or is, is there a better word to describe that? These are not melt, these are meltdowns. These are catastrophic events for all species. They're ruined. Speaking of ruined, the next story will ruin your day, I'm sure. So all four reactors written off. Written off. Does it look like it's written off to anybody? 
Even a tornado couldn't do that. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, the team included experts from laboratories in China, South Korea, and Canada. Yeah, but who are they? As well as two staff from the Degenerate International Atomic Energy's own laboratories in Monaco. The, the worst of the worst works for this industry. The worst humans you can dream up, that's who's working there. That scumbag idiot machine I showed you earlier, scouring at the camera, that's the worst human imaginable, for God's sakes. I'm trying to tell you nothing happened. Decontaminating Fukushima, yeah, get ready for it. This is the relentless scumbag of the earth, Jim Smith. And look at it, look at the freaking smile he got on his face. Professor of Environmental Science, University of Portsmouth. How many freaking times have we covered this crazy creature, I wonder? Deli and decontamination, decontaminating Fukushima, have billions been spent, been worth it? Let me take you back for a second. Delivery of radioactive soil to an inter intern storage site. I think this is 2019. 2015, my apologies. 2015, I, I'm going to walk you back for a second. Bags of radioactive waste, radioactive waste. Not tritium, but radioactive waste. At Tomoka, uh, Fukushima Prefecture, four years after the nuclear disaster began. Well, it'll, it'll never end, so. The government plans to build depositories on around 16 square kilometers of land in the tomb, the tombs, the towns of Akuma and Futaba, which host the crippled both of them, during the south and west respectively sides, south and north sides of the Diachi plant, which hosts the crippled Fukushima number one power plant. They're both connected to it. They're abandoned. And so over the next year, 43,000 cubic meters of waste equivalent to less than 1% of the estimated total of 22 cubic 22 million cubic meters created by the Fukushima nuclear reactor meltdowns. Look, they're using melt the word meltdowns back in 2015. We should chase them down and beat them up. They're not allowed to say that word. The government is negotiating with about 2,400 landowners to store 2.2 grams of tritium. No, no, wait, no. 2,400 landowners to store 22 million one-ton bags. There's actually 30 million one-ton bags a few years later, which is, you know, one-ton bag in the back of a one-ton pickup truck, bumper to bumper, is five rows of traffic around the planet touching bumpers. No, Dana, there's only 2.2 grams got out of the buildings. Dana, stop lying. I'm sorry. Fukushima, have the millions spent been worth it. That's what they spent on Jim Smith. They spent millions on him to come out and stab you in the throat. Really, a real life monster. That's a real life monster. We've covered him so many times now. It's ridiculous. The Chernobyl, and to a lesser extent, Fukushima, <laughs> he starts off with a Big bang is it's so evil what he's doing and all the media is putting him on a pedestal and yet he claims no conflict of interest. Think of the worst humans on the planet and give them a degree and call him a professor, 
that's what we're dealing with worldwide. It has been discovered. There's millions of monsters like Jim Smith out there, but he's prolific. So Jim Smith should go down there and explain to us how logical that is. And to a lesser, you see, claiming Fukushima has less than Chernobyl. Chernobyl what he's saying is Chernobyl is worse than Fukushima. I, I find that offensive. Chernobyl is not equal to either one of these reactors. These were way bigger than Chernobyl. Each of them were full of, gra of these are full of uranium plutonium. Chernobyl was graphite. Chernobyl was a new reactor. Chernobyl didn't have decades of reactor cores stored at the top of the building in the worst possible place imaginable. Literally the stupidest spot on the entire planet to store that stuff. It's the stupidest spot conceivable, and that's the engineering. There's 70 reactors in the United States with the same attributes. The Chernobyl, to a lesser extent, Fukushima, contaminated large areas of land with low-level radioactivity. To Tokyo, per square meter, or per kilogram, was 29 million becquels just of gamma. Where there's 36 million people. They can't get rid of the sediment from the water filtration. They can't get rid of the sewage. They can't get rid of the ashes from the incinerators. All of it's too radioactive to get rid of. I've never heard tell of nothing like this in my life. But each of Fukushima's reactors is a thousand Chernobyl's. Chernobyl was brutal, for goodness sakes. It closed 9,400 farms in Ireland, Scotland, and the United Kingdom. After boat accidents, huge effects were t efforts were taken to decontaminate affected areas. A recent study of Fukushima raises doubt about whether these decontamination efforts were worthwhile. Less than one-third of the population has returned to the evacuated zone, and extensive areas of forest in the regions remain contaminated. And But the, this guy lies so much, I'm just going to go through it, and then I'll show you the actual documentation. Following the accident, this was an event. You can't call this an accident. This is an event. You built them in an earthquake zone where there's 1,000 earthquakes a year and 3,000-year legacy of tsunamis much higher than that one that came through. You were asking for the meltdown. I'm sorry, the melt. <coughs> resulting location of more than 100,000 people. You, well, you should have abandoned Tokyo of 36 million people. For goodness sakes. <laughs> By the way, there's 105,000 storage sites. 105,000 storage sites for those one-ton bags. The dominant source of radiation exposure for people stem from gamma. For, first off, the time of CC-137, when you say words like that, the biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is the curium isotopes. That's why they call the reactor core curium when it melts down, because everything melts together, right? And the curium isotopes, like curium-244, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. And plutonium is infinitely da more dangerous than cesium with a 24,000-year half-life, and there's 10 half-lives. It never goes away. It'll be here long past the human experience. The, the industry is so evil, it thinks it's natural. So many generations of being just evil scum, now, now it's natural. Now it's like, oh, well, my parents were evil, their parents were evil. What's the big whoop? The dominant source of radiation exposure for people from gamma rays emitted by contaminated soil, pavement, roads, buildings. The objective of the decontamination operation was to ensure that the general public received an annual dose of less than 1,000 microsievers. Like, why would you use microsievers? 
these are physical atoms. You're not picking up microsievers and putting it in the bags. You're picking up physical atoms. Beckwell's per kilogram. Strike 1,595 this year alone for Jim Smith. Above background levels. The average natural radiation dose in Japan stands at 2,000, 2 point, what did he got there? 2,200 microsieverts. You don't measure it in microsieverts. Those bags are not microsieverts. These bags are physical atoms per kilogram. And cesium and radio cesium, which is the British terminology, cesium, which is the most important long-lived radioactive element emitted by the accidents in terms of radiation dose. Again, that's ludicrous. It was Jim Smith, what do you expect, I suppose? It still astonishes me how evil these people actually are. And you look at them, they look like a normal human, see? Well, almost. And you look at Jim Smith, you know there's something missing, right? That's the first thing that strikes you. When you see that picture, his, his cover picture with that stupid smile on his face, you know there's something wrong with that one. Hang on, here we go. Uh, let's go this way. It's madness. Let's just tell this story anyway, for badness. So when they say cesium, what they mean is, I hate your guts. That's what they really wanted to say, but they decided to say cesium. Curium isotopes is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods, not cesium. And plutonium and uranium, you know, what the reactors actually run on. Isotopes of iodines and all their daughters, xenon and all their daughters. This is just a fraction of them, but it, and krypton, you know, the stuff your kid is brainwashed and thinks is cool. And uranium, plutonium. Americium, Neptunium, Strontium, Cesium, and many, many dangerous daughters. For every Cesium-137 produced, there's 100 Strontium-90s, for goodness sakes, which goes into the bones of the children and the animals and the mammals and the insects and the birds and mutates their stem cells forever. Consequently, decontamination of agricultural land primarily involved removing the top five centimeters of soil. You can't decontaminate land first off, and just removing the top five centimeters, an inch of soil, it's, it's absurd to suggest that is going to change anything. It's like the studies out there of how. Uh, plants and trees, fruit trees and meadows and everything used the roots to suck up radiation are everywhere. So let's pretend all that don't exist. The reactors never melted down. That don't exist anymore. Dig up f uh, five centimeters of topsoil and growing food right alongside of one-ton bags, tens of thousands of one-ton bags, surrounded by millions of one-ton bags of radiation. And, and, and the bags are around 100,000 beckles a kilogram. There's 1,000 kilograms in each bag, and lots of it is 5 and 10 million beckles a kilogram. Not microsievers, not millisievers. In urban areas, uh, decontamination uh, efforts entail the removal of topsoil from sports fields as well as sandblasting. 
liberate it back into the environment. You can't destroy it. Pressure washing surfaces and pressure washing drains and gutters. Well, it's because the drains and the gutters is where the radiation numbers gather up. So they want to get those numbers down so you don't walk over with your Geiger count and say, look, see? Right? How many times have we recovered that in the last 12 years? Removing topsoil from a nuclear wasteland is not zero to do with decontamination. It's, it's zero to do with it. Picking up millions of one-ton bags, you can't decontaminate it. The forests are still radioactive. They only picked up bags on 3% of the land where they wanted people to move back into. That's, that's it. That's the only spots where they picked up, which meant they should have picked up about 300 trillion one-ton bags in the 14 prefectures that were banned for a decade by 55 countries. These efforts reduce doses by 60%. You can't reduce the doses by 60%. You're only cleaning up 3% of the land. It's, it's widely acknowledged that the land is recontaminated immediately, immediately, within hours. It's surrounded. Everything is radioactive there. It's a nuclear wasteland. It's not a no-go zone. It's a nuclear wasteland. And so their version, Jim Smith, of course, we know is going to be the worst. He's another Jerry Thomas, another Kathleen Higley, another Rod Adams, where reality escapes them. In residential areas and farmland, allowing people to return to their homes in large parts of the evacuated area. Far cry from Chernobyl, or extensive decontamination initiatives were ultimately abandoned, leaving huge evacuated areas that remain empty to the day. So again, trying to pretend that Fukushima is nowhere close to a Chernobyl. And each of the reactors in Japan, because they were pure uranium, pure plutonium, a decade of reactor cores at the top of the buildings, or at least a thousand Chernobyls for each one of them. Chernobyl was a single reactor. You got two completely missing. Chernobyl never had no fuel pools. It was a graphite reactor, which is totally different from the pure plutonium uranium reactors. Reactor three was a mixed oxide fuel reactor. And people like Jim Smith, there, there should be accountability for that that should be banished from humanity for what he's got done and continues to do. And so should the media that publishes him. And it shows this map here. Hold area decontamination completed. Look at that. Suggesting that nothing got contaminated. Only that little area. And see that specified reconstruction revitalization basis? Here's another map he didn't bother showing you. This was nine prefectures. He didn't show you this, did he? The question of how to dispose of contaminated soil is not limited to Fukushima. The same scenario is playing out in seven other prefectures. Iwati, Miyagi, Barati, Tachigi, Guma, Satama, and Chiba. Well, he wants you to think of just this little tiny section because he forgot what a human actually is. He doesn't know what that is. He's, it's obvious he hates humanity and 8 million species and is working hard to exterminate us. Decontaminating the land of Fukushima has cost tens of billions of dollars. Tens of billions have been employed. The process has unfortunately also caused substantial radiation exposure for the homeless, the destitute the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language that he calls workers for some reason, and has generated huge amounts of radioactive soil waste. Yeah, 30 million, 30 million one-ton bags of it. I think that's a huge amount. doesn't give you any numbers. 
But the question of whether to decontaminate land is complex and only partially related to scientific evidence, because the, like the evidence doesn't matter. The last thing they're interested in is evidence. They don't want nothing to do with evidence. 30 million one-ton bags, ultimately. As far as you can see, there's 105,000 sites like this where they scrape the topsoil in 3% of the land in just Fukushima. And remember, nine other prefectures are incredibly radioactive, too. On the one hand, decontamination provides reassurance the radiation is being cleaned up and that doses are being reduced. And it can also give the impression that low-level radiation is more dangerous than it actually is. <clears throat> oh, I hate people like this. They make it really hard to do the job, right? Let me introduce you to the homeless, I suppose. Let's see if I got you here. <clears throat> it's just crazy. The whole story is crazy. The truth is so crazy, they're just pretending it don't exist. Researchers are too frightened to get closer than 100 kilometers from the meltdown. Uh, water cannons couldn't spray the reactors. The helicopters couldn't spray the reactors. So they called in the heralds of society. No, not academics and scientists like Jim Smith, but the seniors and the homeless, people that can't read or write. The homeless are taken to Fukushima ready to die. And at the end of the month, they're paid $11 a day, American. $11 a day. So Jim Smith can make a fortune lying about us, see? Got to have lots of money left over for people like Jim Smith. Mentally disabled are working at Fukushima, and they're given secondhand suits and treated like disposable people, which is Jim Smith's really good at that, by the way. Even Forbes, Forbes, said is outrageous, and Forbes is outrageous. Homeless people are being sold to companies and put to work on Fukushima. A cynical disregard for human life, risking a bleak future for the radiation-contaminated nation, the nation. The mentally handicapped are working at Fukushima and are often given second-hand suits. Look, they're given paper suits. So if you give them a second-hand paper suit, a paper suit is useless. The suit needs to be about six feet thick to protect you. Multiple nuclear meltdowns. <clears throat> they never picked up 30 million one-ton bags because they were bored, to my knowledge. It's hard to say with the Japs anyway. But it can also give the impression that low-level radiation is more dangerous than it actually is. <clears throat> Hang on. I don't mind, I just hate the disruptions to the flow that we can never get started because the nuclear industry got to stick a big fucking turd in the punch bowl all the time. <coughs> Let me see what we got here. All right, we're almost to it. We're almost there. Yeah, wait for it. Just looking for one more. There we go.
Bingo. This will get us past this madness. Irreversible heart damage for children. 50 becquels a kilogram of cesium-137. And for 200 million atoms, which is each atom is a becquel, pulse, the becquel is a pulse of energy a second. And so the atoms, the, the ionized atoms, the isotopes of them are pulsing energy at the speed of light in every direction, once a second, basically. And so when you see Beckwell's, that's 50 pulses a second. Tokyo is 29 million Beckwell's a kilogram. So imagine 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. How are you going to separate 50 of that nicely? You can't see it or smell it or hear it or perceive it. Children with over 11 Beckwell's a kilogram start to see heart problems. And it's clear that low-level contamination is more dangerous than a single dose. And officials sharply raised the radiation limits, levels for residents to get iodine pills after their meltdown. Ooh, you're not allowed to say meltdown. 75 times higher than the World Health Organization recommended for children. It's a very definition of insanity, by the way. And a child's risk of cancer from radiation is... A hundred is actually a thousand times higher than an adult with the same exposures. Their immune system is developing, for goodness sakes. Their, their massive stem cell productions. And it's the same for insects and birds and small animals and mammals. It's, it's an extinction event is what we've seen for the last 12 years from the marine research expeditions. Not just cancer. Heart diseases and strokes that causes liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline. There's around 1,800 diseases from radiation. So if you if you go back to the, the original releases, the original nuclear testing, the original nuclear dumping, that's when you've seen the explosion of diabetes, for instance, and Down syndrome, and uh, autism, and... Alzheimer's and dementia. Disinformation by Jim Smith, a.k.a. Nuclear Proponents, tried to confuse the public about the effects of external and internal radiation. And uh, Jim Jones, uh, Jim Smith, rather, is only talking about external. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. At 50 becquels a kilogram in an adult leads to irreversible lesions in the vital organ. So when he says it gives the impression of low-level radiation more dangerous than it actually is, he's refusing to acknowledge all these other academics. A real monster, right? That's, that's the definition of a real monster. Looks like you and me, talks like you and me in a normal conversation. But when it comes to nuclear industry, he's the first one to, to destroy your future with the stroke of a pen. Dose rates were not dangerously high in many areas of Fukushima that were subject to decontamination. I showed you the decontamination, the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society a few minutes ago. In fact, doses were relatively low in the first year following the accident, less than 12,000 microsieverts. And these levels decrease significantly in the subsequent years. They're only looking for gamma. They're not even trying to measure uranium. They found plutonium and strontium in 2,200 locations. And Canada was covered. <clears throat> so saying uh, less than 12,000 microsieverts is a low dose, this is absurd to suggest. A sing I just showed you, a single atom gets in your body and your body attacks it for the rest of your life with white blood cells. And eventually it builds a sarcophagus around it and you call it a tumor, right? But you compromises your immune system. And so now the, the normal pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign are lethal, particularly to the young and the elderly. And the female population is four times more vulnerable than the male population. And this is true for all species. 
So if you start knocking down the female populations of all the species, what do you think is going to happen eventually? Decontamination also allows agricultural land to be returned to productive use more quickly. Nothing says stupid quite like nuclear. Nuclear has its own class of idiots like Jim Smith. And there's a lot of them out there. 105,000 sites like that. And people like Jim Smith are taking advantage of your lack of knowledge for the majority of the population. Certainly not the ones that are here all the time, but the majority of the populations. In the evacuated zones where dose rates were around 10 times higher, it's less clear, clear that decontamination was beneficial. Only 30% of the people have returned to their homes in the decontaminated part of the area. Much of the land in the most contaminated so-called difficult-to-return zones, which are nuclear wastelands, remains abandoned, and appropriately so. He said a better option may have been to declare most of the zone a nature reserve and allow managed rewilding of the areas. Well, only the migratory species will be there. You won't find the insects, the birds. They're not going to go in there willingly. Rewilding is happening to a large extent anyway, as it did at Chernobyl. Now, if you go look at what they're talking about, the species at Chernobyl, it's the moose, it's the carb or the elk, it's the large bears, it's the wolves, the coyotes, it's the foxes, migratory animals that are moving around, rather. And Chernobyl is still a nuclear wasteland. Chernobyl is a pipsqueak compared to Fukushima. And Chernobyl was brutal, man. That's brutal. It, but it's nothing compared to Fukushima, but it's still brutal. Because Fukushima is pure uranium, pure plutonium, particularly Reactor 3, which was the mixed oxide fuel facility. That's a whole sadistic, demonic reactor on its own. It would also have avoided decontamination workers being exposed to radiation. Well, he ran out of the homeless, see? Not, not, what do you mean decontamination workers? There's no job out there, no university classes for decontamination workers. It's, I showed you that earlier. It's the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society. And it should be people like Jim Smith, shouldn't it? They should be sacrificed first before any homeless are killed. It would also have avoided decontamination workers being exposed to radiation, allowed more financial support to help people relocate. It shows you Fox in Chernobyl. And look how raggedy the fox actually is. That's not a beautiful, healthy fur coat. That's the furthest thing from it. Have you ever seen a fox? Go look up a picture of a fox. It don't look anything like that, whatever the frig that had happened to it. Scum, it's a 100% scumbag industry. An industry of predators. That's what Jim Smith and University of Portsmouth, that place is nothing but predators. And people send their children there. You know what's going to happen to your children? You put them in Jim Smith's class, don't you? Fukushima contaminated forest. The land in around the regions, town and villages has generally been decontaminated effectively. It's ludicrous to suggest you can decontaminate towns. Pre-Fukushima, that wasn't even conceivable. No one would ever utter that statement. However, much of the Fukushima prefecture, 71% is covered by forests, and the forest remains contaminated. The persistence of radio cesium, cesium, the British scum, in ecosystem, particularly in forests, has been known for many decades. Globally, radio cesium levels in wild foodstuffs, such as mushrooms, edible plants, game animals, freshwater fish, tend to be higher than those found in agricultural systems. Because you're shipping agricultural food out, right? Regularly. But, if you look up all nuclear power plants, you'll see the majority of them are surrounded by, or in the middle, or the majority of all nuclear power plants on the entire planet and nuclear waste dumps are surrounded by farms right up to the fences to move the radiation out into your supermarket so you can get sick and die. 
And he, he loves his job. He loves being a scumbag. He revels. The only thing he found that he's actually good at is being a degenerate monster. Royal boar in certain regions of Germany still exhibit radiosisium levels exceeding consumption limits 36 years later as a consequence of Chernobyl and the historical nuclear weapons testing. Well, if the historical nuclear weapons testing has that attribute, that means all the species on the planet are affected, yeah? Well, they are now because of Fukushima, aren't they? Restrictions on the consumption of forest products have lasted for decades around Chernobyl, and they are expected to persist in many forested areas of Fukushima, too. Now, you should have abandoned half of Japan. Radio cesium, and by the way, many people have come out and said, bear with me, many people have said if reactor four goes like that, you should abandon Tokyo immediately. Reactor three went right away too, by the way. Mainly attributable to the radio cesium chemical Similarities to potassium, crucial plant nutrition. Well, first off, he's his whole story is based on cesium. The entire his his entire narrative is predicated upon cesium one thirty seven. Forest poses a wildfire risk. There are many forest fires in the vicinity of Chernobyl. And the radiation doses from the smoke inhalation are extremely low, even for firefighters. And the fires are not significantly redistributed to radioactivity. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you can't destroy the radiation. Or you would have said that right there, wouldn't you? It's long been known and acknowledged in many different sources. You can't destroy the radiation. And the radiation likes to go to the tips of the trees. As the trees are growing out, the radiation distributes out there. And, it, and wherever the fruit are, it'll also go there if it's a fruit tree. And what, what's the first thing to burn on the tree again? And this, the claim that it's not liberated back into the environment? For, uh, royal boar in Germany contained high levels of radio cesium. Yeah, and it's convenient you're not looking for plutonium or uranium or americium or neptunium or curium. There are no easy answers regarding cleanup after nuclear action. Japan has made huge and often successful efforts to reduce the radiation doses and reassure people living in or returning to the affected areas, but low level radiation remains everywhere, particularly in forest. No, it's everywhere. It's it's everywhere. You didn't go away and leave all the cars behind because it's not everywhere. It, it's everywhere. There's 105,000 sites where they're storing it, and this is just a fraction of a site you're looking at in that, right? It's everywhere. You didn't abandon the communities because it's like walking in sunshine or sleeping next to somebody or flying on an airplane. Did you go away and abandon these communities because it's harmless and benign and innocuous? You can't decontaminate by spraying the roads and the roofs and the gutters and the drains where the, where the radiation... Because when the radiation washes down off the roofs and goes down the gutters and hits the ground, that's where you're going to get huge numbers to them. Why are there farmers in the field surrounded by millions of one-ton bags? We need to remember, though, the radiation doses are always very low. It's absurd. Like, you didn't pick up 30 million one-ton bags because it's low. You picked it up because it's like 100,000 beckles a kilogram. You picked it up because it's everywhere. And you only done that, which wasn't effective at all, to 3% of the land, which means it got com immediately contaminated. 
because 97 percent of the land is still incredibly radioactive every time the wind blows through the forest it showers the communities you didn't abandon all these cars because it's low level you, you didn't abandon you didn't abandon all the villages all the schools all the universities all the banks all the hospitals all the graveyards because it's low level. The biological effects of radiation for nuclear action is primary DNA damage. No, so if the atom gets in your body, it sequesters in your muscles, your organs, and your bones. The atom now pulses energy at the speed of light every second. Your body has to attack it with white blood cells immediately and constantly for the rest of your life. So when you cut your finger, uh, your white blood cells from your knuckles and surrounding joints, which are not just your spleen makes white blood cells, right? you make them in all your joints, will populate that area and, and rebuild that, that area. and takes four to seven days or something, right? Typically, depending on how severe it is. But... A typical little, you know, decent cut that needs a band-aid is four to seven days for it to heal. But, and that's the way blood cells is flooding your body. You feel tired, you're lethargic because you have less oxygen because you have less red blood cells carrying oxygen and nutrition. Your body is, is it's a big wound and your body is saturating the area of white blood cells from all sources, all the joints throughout your body, right? And you feel lethargic. So when it gets in your body, it's pulsing energy for the rest of your life. And not, not only is your body trying to contain the radiation with the white blood cells, it has to send in even more white blood cells because it pulses energy every second. That destroys your DNA, your chromosomes, your cells, and everything else, and lesions on your organs, heart damage. It's pulsing right into your body and for a lot of the isotopes. And so it has to re every second it pulses, destroying millions of cells, for instance. It has to repair the millions of cells. It can't do that. It can't keep up with it. It can't catch up either. And it has to deal with the explosion going up. Imagine getting lots of them in your body. And now your immune system is compromised, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that normally wouldn't bother you at all. So to suggest that the biological effect of radiation from nuclear action is primarily DNA damage, I can't understand how he can pretend he's a human. I can't understand why he hates everybody so much. I can't comprehend it. He's a special kind of monster to do that. Because he's smart. He can get a job, make a fortune, doing just about anything, but he chose this job where he destroys everybody's future and the species' future. Tell, like, tell me that's normal. Like if, I, if I was a, a prosecutor, I would charge him right away. Right? That would be your duty. You would have to charge him, and you would have to ask for a life sentence for just that article alone, for disarming the population from being able to defend themselves. And in the media that published him, the conversation, what should happen to them? Shouldn't they be disbanded? Shouldn't their company be liquidated to pay restitution to the victims that they tricked? are the same as those from the natural radiation we're exposed to from food we eat and in the surrounding environment. So now he's saying that the anthropogenic man, he's conflating anthropogenic man-made radiation with natural, harmless, stupid, everyday background, like potassium, magnesium. Har, har, like you can't make a dirty bomb or a nuclear reactor or something out of that stuff. It's just that one... That one chemical, which is uranium two thirty five, that's 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 the mighty. Um, you can't make uh, a nuclear reactor out of anything else. Well, the dose rates for workers during the action can be extremely high. The homeless, the destitute, the victims of society. You mean those from radiation the environment are low in the long term. Like when you when you try to say that. Because you're not at Fukushima nuclear meltdown the site itself, you're okay. You, 
you really you really don't have any attributes of a human whatsoever. Millions of people worldwide receive higher annual radiation, natural radiation doses than the residents of Fukushima zone without ever worrying about it. Uh, more than five years ago, Jim Smith did small consultancy contracts on behalf of the university for various organizations like the Jap Atomic Energy Agency, which was created post Fukushima. And Jim Smith previously had a grant from the UK Natural Environment Research Council funded partly or mostly by the Radioactive Waste Management Limited in the United Kingdom. And we've covered them since their inception many times. They're the most useless sacks of shit on the bloody planet. So 2.22 million cubic meters created by Fukushima number one nuclear meltdowns. Now we're off. We're off Jim Smith's story officially right there. Millions of people worldwide receive higher annual radiation doses, that was the last sentence of his article, than the residents of Fukushima zone without even worrying about it. Millions of people worldwide receive higher natural yearly radiation doses. There, there's nothing natural about that. And there's nothing natural about that. The reason the food was banned in 14 prefectures for a decade was the appropriate reason because it's a nuclear wasteland. He should go to trial. This person should be put in in jail, not allowed back out, and then tried eventually for crimes against humanity. So to suggest that people in a nuclear wasteland it's almost too much to bear that someone that evil can exist. And we knew this was coming. We've covered them tons and tons and tons of times. And particularly just like over the years, but particularly since July the twenty July the thirteenth, twenty twenty three. I can't remember what I was supposed to grab. I'm sure I will. So 2,400 landowners are in negotiation with the government to store, to store the millions of one-ton bags. That, that doesn't count, apparently. How much money is Jim Smith making? I'm hoping he's making a lot of money to be that evil, because he could probably ask for it and get it. Ninety percent of the money for the nuclear industry goes to administration and people like Jim Smith. So I see Jim Smith go down to America on every one of those bags. Dana's wrong. Because I know he's never coming back, right? Let's go back a ways. Fukushima, a lesson learned from an extraordinary case of soil decontamination. By 2019, Fukushima decontamination efforts had generated 20 million cubic meters of waste. So I just showed you a story that in 2015 had 22 million. <laughs> Move ahead to 2019, it's 20 million. Move ahead to 2023, and it's 2.2 grams of tritium. Nothing else. Don't worry, it's all in the thousand tanks they built. No, they're, they're actually insane. That's the only way to describe the nuclear industry. It cost the Japanese about 24 billion euros, or 24 billion sterlings. I, I'm not sure what that translates into. Close to 30 billion U.S. anyway. 30 billion U.S. just on picking up one-ton bags of radiation in the nuclear wasteland that is Japan. Decontamination activities have mainly targeted agricultural landscapes, residential areas. So we're, we, we move past to Jim Smith. I'm showing you evidence now that, that helps debunk it. But the story upset me so much today. Uh, 
Uh, and I had a really, really hard day today. Today was very long. I was up early and gone. A very long day. And I got some bad news coming up in the next few weeks. It'll take me out of action for a while. Due to my health, in case you're wondering. The forests have not been cleaned up because of the difficulty, very high cost that these operations would represent, which means there'll be nobody out there to counter these disgusting parasites in the nuclear industry. No one's shown the documentation. Basically, nobody now. I'm, I'm censored like I don't even exist. As they cover 75% of the surface area located within the radioactive fallout zone. There's words you won't hear in 2023. The forests have not been cleaned up because there's 75% of the fallout zone for radiation. Not 70%, like Jim Smith melted down to. These uh, forests constitute a potential long-term reservoir of radiocesium. Again, to suggest that radiocesium is the only isotope you should worry about. Like, because we hear so much, every nuclear scientist should get a punch in the mouth every day for that statement existing, for not speaking up, not correcting it. In cultivated areas within the special decontamination zones, the surface layers of the soil was removed to a depth of five centimeters. One inch, slightly over one inch, inch and a quarter. Try scraping up an inch and a quarter soil. Tell me how easy that was. And replaced with a new soil made of crushed granite available locally. <laughs> so everything is contaminated. You're going to dig up, you're going to scrape up topsoil and use granite, the local granite to pour back on it. Makes total sense, don't it? If you're Jim Smith, I suppose. In areas further from the plant, substance is known to fix or substitute for radiocesium, potassium, fertilizers, zeolite powers, powders, have been applied to the soil. And this is madness to suggest that you can displace uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, curium, etc., 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 by, by using potassium. And we've seen that in a shitload of studies from Chernobyl and the European Union, where they, the European Union was using, because all of Europe was contaminated after Chernobyl. But anybody that tries to convince you that potassium fertilizer and, and powders and everything else can mitigate Fukushima follow are, are monsters they know better and they're monsters they're actual like jim smith they're just monsters they got nothing to do with a human whatsoever substance is known to fix known to fix radioactive fallout so you picked up 30 million not not 20 million not 22 million not Bear with me. I'm going to play a clip for you. This is Al Jazeera. And Al Jazeera... It's going to take me a second. i got to stand up and fix the light. And Al Jazeera is going to tell you... I'm going to put it on a loop. I'll be right back. 60 million one-ton bags. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So there's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So there's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So there's about 60 million one-ton bags. I'm pretty conservative because I say 30 million. Uh, 
substances known to fix or substitute for radiocesium. So by saying only radiocesium, which is British terminology, so guess who cooked up that alloy? They're suggesting nothing else got out. Same as South Korea claiming it's, and the International Atomic Energy Agency saying only one point or 2.2 grams of tritium got out. As far as woodland areas are concerned, only those that were within 20 meters of the houses were treated, cutting branches and collecting litter. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so absurd to suggest that that somehow mitigated the other 75% that's brutal radioactive, and you can't clean up, picking up a one and a quarter inch of topsoil is not, got nothing to do with decontamination, it's got everything to do with making um, making victims. Residential areas were cleaned, ditch cleaning, roof and gutter cleaning, vegetable gardens were treated as cultivated areas. Like in other words, they spent uh, 30 billion US dollars picking up one ton bags simply just to manipulate you. Zero, uh, zero efficiency. Everything was recontaminated immediately. The reactors are still melting down, for goodness sakes. And here's another story. I think this is 2019 also. Delivery of radioactive soil interim storage begins in Fukushima. Uh, no, this is 2015. I'm sorry. Back to 2015. Bags of radioactive waste. Not tritium, but radioactive waste is seen piled up at temporary storage sites in Tomoka, Fukushima Prefecture, four years after it began. Uh, two, 22 million cubic meters in 2015. In 2019, they watered that down to 20 million. Al Jazeera last year said 60 million. I played that clip for you a few moments ago. Soil from Fukushima decontamination site to be relocated for demonstration experiments. Do you remember that story? That one's a doozy. The experiment aimed to confirm the safety of reusing radioactive soil with relatively low radioactivity. Of course, it's, it's ridiculous to suggest it's low radioactivity, while also reducing the amount of radioactive waste to be disposed of outside the prefecture. And this is where the narrative changed, right? A vacant plot of land in Tokyo, where the environment ministry plans to conduct a demonstration experiment using soil from Fukushima Prefecture. They gave it up because the locals in Tokyo wouldn't have nothing, up, nothing to do with it. They were like, no, you're not. Last month, the government announced it will conduct an experiment on the feasibility of locating soil from Fukushima nuclear meltdown area. The soil is slated to move to three locations in the Kanto, which is Tokyo regions. Experiment aims confirm the safety of reusing soil with relatively low radioactivity. Like, why would you do something like that? Like, why would you even suggest? Because they, what they decided to do was just they were disposing of it. They didn't care. And now, now that they'd done that, they had to count for the bags being missing. And so what they'd done recently was they took 14 million, they said, one-ton bags of radiation and dumped it in farmer's fields in Okuma, which is two kilometers away from the ongoing nuclear meltdowns. And they're growing food in that for sale. So they they not only lost the plot, they're, they're going to assassinate you and your supermarkets and restaurants worldwide. And to, it's hard to comprehend how much food they grow in these prefectures. But Fukushima alone is over, which is one of the bigger prefectures, is they never stop growing rice and other food. And it's over a billion pounds a year. And and the numbers we're talking about are catastrophic. And and the effects upon your health, there's so many illnesses and diseases, not only deficiencies and injuries and illnesses. That's why everybody in Canada is sick because you removed all restrictions after 93 days. 
well, like 55 countries banned the food for a decade, so they couldn't ship it anywhere in Canada. So the worst of the worst radioactive food was shipped to Canada. Where I'm to currently, maybe 4% of the population is not obese. It's like that right across Canada, by the way. The whole country's sick because they've been poisoned by Japan at the supermarkets here. Because the nuclear industry captured Canada in the 40s and 50s, right through the Secrecy Act. Canada's a haven for nuclear scumbags on top of that. However, gaining public understanding over safety concerns likely to prove a high hurdle. Following the accident at the plant owned by what is now Te Tokyo Electric Power Holding Corporation, which is actually the Japanese government because it was nationalized, radioactive substances were discharged across the wide area, though the majority fell around the power plant. The majority fell around the power plant. My contempt for these people is absolute. Like, all of Japan is contaminated. We know that because there's 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. I have nothing but contempt and, and the deepest contempt imaginable for the nuclear industry. They've, they've proved themselves a worthy adversary. They're exterminating every species on the planet. They hate everything equally. Not just humans, they hate all the species. They hate the bacteria and the fungus, for goodness sakes. Because you know radiation kills that. And that's why your forests are tinder dry, because you kill the bacteria and the fungus from the perpetual radioactive fallout from these great big stupid disease factories that are known as nuclear power plants for some reason. Nuclear power plant is all about the nuclear fuel cycle. And they need the fuel cycle for around 18 months. And by then, the their breeder fuel. So they take it out and they can extract a massive amount of plutonium for their bombs, right? You know, plume covered in the whole planet. This is TEPCO's numbers based on, t on uh, venting, not based upon the actual inventories, the meltdowns and everything else. This is insane. The majority fell around the power plant. It must be nice to be crazy all the time, eh? No, the majority did not fall around the power plant. It covered the entire planet. To expedite the reconstruction of affected areas, the government began decontamination work. Soon after the accident on residential and farmlands. Residential and farmlands. Like, the reality of it was, there wasn't a single nuclear academic on the entire planet, not a single professor, not a single university student that looked at these pictures and said, the fuel pool and the reactor cores are intact. Not a single one. Every one of them knew it was long gone. And none of them spoke up and warned you. So, so their targets was residential and farmland. That was 3% of the land where they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, which were stored on 105,000 sites. But back in 2016 or 17 or something, it was actually 150,000 sites. Most of the removed material, now try moving 30 million one-ton bags. Try going around and writing on 30 million one-ton bags, Dana's wrong, Jim Smith is right. Most of the removed material was surface soil. No, it wasn't surface soil. It was barely an inch of the surface. A total of 14 million cubic meters of soil has been moved, removed. 14 million. Which is what they're going to use to expedite the reconstruction of affected areas. Currently, the soil is stockpiled in 16 square kilometer storage facilities. That this is recent after 
It spans the two prefectural towns of Akuma and Futaba, which are connected to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown itself. The plan for the soil is for it to be fully disposed of outside the Fukushima prefecture. Like, why not? Why can't you uh, dispose of the tritium outside Fukushima prefecture too? Why, uh, because the tanks are empty. The tanks were built to manipulate you into complacency. And the buildings are actually gone. When the central government asked the two towns governments accept a facility that are, are abandoned, it pledges that the storage would be temporary, a vow contained in the law, the establishment of Japan's Environmental Storage and Safety Corporation, which was passed in 2014. Japan Environmental Storage. Well, they created that in 2014, right? Law stipulates the soil should be relocated outside the prefecture. I got no idea why they done that. Though exact location, method of disposal, and other matters have yet to be decided. The Environment Ministry believes it might avoid having disposed of 75% of the soil, which has a density of radioactive cesium 8,000 becquels or less per kilogram, which is half a million per square meter. You got to multiply by 64 or so to get a square meter, 68. We say 64, just to undercut it a little bit, right? To, even then, it's a terrible numbers. Half million becquels a square meter. Now, they're only acknowledging cesium, so what about all the other isotopes? You really think they're not there? You really think they don't exist? Is there anybody out there that's, that's gullible? That naive? Instead of plans to reuse the material in public works nationwide, in such a case, the amount of hazardous soil for disposal will be reduced to about 25%. So they plan to use 75% because they say it's 8,000 becquels a kilogram. But nothing got picked up at 8,000 becquels a kilogram. You had four reactors and eight fuel pools detonate. You really think it's lousy 8,000 becquels a kilogram? By reducing the amount of disposal, we hope to lower the hurdle for securing areas that are willing to accept the material as a final destination, a senior ministry official says. Of course, never a name attached to it, right? According to the experts, and which they never name, a level of 8,000 becks per kilogram exposure to a person, exposes a person to radiation of one millisieverts or less annually if they worked near the soil for 1,000 hours for the year. This is ludicrous because you don't measure this in millisieverts, which is a thousand microsieverts. Eight thousand beck was a kilogram, right? Where's the translation to millisieverts there? Why would you measure it in millisieverts? It's physical atoms. That's what eight thousand beck was. It's eight thousand decays a second. Millisieverts is something you would use for the fuel rods in, in the site itself. It's not something you would use for radioactive fallout. When you do that, that's how they're trying to frig you over and how to destroy your future. And they're going to be successful at it because nobody's willing to use the voice. Everybody's just, no, I'm not saying nothing. All the academics I'm talking about, right? Oh, my God. One millisievert per year is deemed a maximum allowable limits of radiation exposure for ordinary citizens. Yeah, but that, that so-called fable one millisievert that you're talking about, this is a number they jacked out of uh, magically conjured up. So what they done was the nuclear industry quite a long time ago, they said, well, bananas give you this much radiation and, and rocks give you this much radiation and sunshine gives you this much radiation. But this, this is the stuff that humanity and the 8 million species are already made of. Potassium and magnesium and everything else. We're acclimated to that through genetic superior selection. You can't equate a millisiever of natural stuff with a millisiever anthropogenic man-made radiation. And first off, you don't measure it in millisievers or microsievers. You measure it in physical atoms and becquels, atomic decays per second. So what they're doing there again is, and this is the International Commission of Radiological Protection, which is the, the ICRP, which is United Nations, same as UNSCLEAR and IRPA 
and the International Atomic Energy Agency. They're all United Nations subsidy company, and and they all support each other. And and so unless you know that know what's not what's up, you think we well, got all these different organizations. They're all saying the same thing. No, they're all the same organization. The cards are not stacked. The cards are not rigged. It's not a shell game that they're playing with you. This has been going on for 80 years. This is hatred. What they're doing is hatred. What they're doing is contempt. That's contempt. When you see something like that, that's called contempt for you and the 8 million species. There's literally, if they had the balls, they'd come up and spit in your face instead of doing that. The ministry has already conducted similar experiments in Lydia Village in Minamasoma City in Fukushima Prefecture. Minima Soma cities, 10 to 20 million becquerels a kilogram. These are off the chart, un unheard of, unprecedented number. All of these numbers are unprecedented pre-Fukushima, by the way. According to the Degenerate Ministry, the measurements of radiation dose volume around the site and radioactivity density in agricultural products did not breach their safety limits. It's impossible not to. You're talking about 500 thousand becquels a kilogram just cesium per square meter you can't just have cesium for god's sakes and for his latest demonstration experiments the ministry plans to temporarily relocate portions of the fukushima prefecture soil to another place to a garden in tokyo the national environmental research training institute um all three locations are managed by the ministry, allowing experiments to be conducted in areas not accessible to the public. Why would you have to do that? Tokyo is a nuclear wasteland, for goodness sakes. I, mean, I said it so many times, i got to show you something. Now, there wasn't a lawyer. Why didn't he show it to you? He shows you everything else. Why didn't he show you Tokyo? He's lying to you, lawyer. Dana's lying. Don't believe Dana. <laughs> Yeah, the numbers in Tokyo are nuts. Let me try this one more time. I don't want one C Tokyo, I want the other one. Bear with me. Look at there. Sometime. Normally that pops up pretty quick, right? Not gonna play ball today or something. I give up. Let's do these couple of headlines. Tokyo neighbor cesium approaching levels found in Fukushima. Chiba incinerator dust, which is right alongside of Tokyo. It's 70,000 becquels a kilogram. And what they were trying to say was that the radiation doesn't float away. It stays there in, in the ash. I laugh because it's so ludicrous. Radioactive dust reported in Tokyo after fog with 4,000 becquels a kilogram never disappears. And they're only mentioning cesium again. Uh, they confirmed 40,000 microsieverts, 40 millisieverts per hour. These are catastrophic numbers at a Tokyo supermarket. Forecast showed Tokyo under radiation threat on Sunday. To like the numbers in Tokyo, if I take, I can take you through the numbers right across Japan. It takes a couple of hours to get through all of it, all the way right across, and then even South Korea and Taiwan closed their schools and told children to stay home because of the radioactive plumes. So they have three meters long, 10 meters wide, one meter deep will be dug and lined with waterproof sheets. There are six cubic meters of soil from Fukushima will be placed in the hole to a depth of 50 centimeters, covered by 50 centimeters of regular soil. The site will then be convened into a flower bed. 
Radioactive levels will be measured, and any water that concentrates within the waterproof sheeting will be discharged into the sewer system after being checked for safety. And when the experiment ends, soil from all three sites will be returned to Fukushima Prefecture. Why would you go through that? So we're going to take three of these out of the 30 to 60 million one-ton bags, and I bring it to Tokyo, and then they're going to say, well, see, told you, it's safe. You know, shut up. Telling lies is the only thing they're really, really exceptionally good at. I like when you do the earthquakes and 10 minutes later they'll come out with a headline, there was no immediate reports of damage. Well, the nuclear sites are so big, it takes an exceptional amount of time to quantify that assertion, doesn't it? Fukushima laden with piles of radioactive soil that can't be moved into storage. You know, these abandoned communities are supposed to razz everything to the ground and put it in a nuclear waste site for a million years. All the houses, all the sidewalks, all the pavement, all the telephone poles, all the supermarkets, all the restaurants, all the schools, all the universities, all the hospitals that have been abandoned should be rest to the ground and methodically taken to a story site held for a hundred thousand to a million years. Let me just zip through this stuff because I'm looking for something in particular. There's roughly 2.4 million cubic meters just in a single village alone. 2.4 million one-ton bags. And you, you got people moving back into those communities now that have are complacent, don't know any better. So far, however, only about 6,000 cubic meters of soil have been transported. While the amount due to be transported next fiscal year stands at 22,000 cubic meters which only leaves uh, 2 million cubic meters to move. It would take over 100 years to transport all the waste to the interim storage facility at that rate. There's no way I'm going to live surrounded by mountains of contaminated soil. Well, you will if Japan says you will. If the nuclear industry writer says you will. In five municipalities, including the city of Fukushima, Koryama, the contaminated soil left after decontamination work is mostly buried on site. So Koryama, they're, they got the school children, which is 375,000 people in that city. What they done was they got the school children to bring water bottles, empty water bottles, you know, Pepsi and drink bottles to school. They fill it up with waddle, waddle. <laughs> they fill it up with water. And they, they lined the outside of the classroom, the inside of the classroom walls with water jugs. And they reduced the radiation levels in the classroom by one-third, they said. And they're, they were measuring it in microsieverts or millisieverts. But that, with time, there's so much radiation that every house, every building in Koryama City is entitled to be decontaminated. You can't decontaminate a building. It simply can't be done. You can d and pretending you're doing it is by power washing. That's you're only pretending, see? And you're just spreading it, liberating it back into the environment. You can't destroy it. You can't burn it in the incinerators. Six years have passed since the outbreak of Fukushima nuclear disaster. In many cases, people have asked for the waste to be removed so they can extend or rebuild their homes or resume farming activities. So you got 2.4 million one-ton bags, and the people have been brainwashed so effectively, they're like, you got to get them out of here. We got to start farming. 
So your biggest enemy right now is a farmer in a nuclear wasteland. And that, that and that's a worthy adversary because you can't tell the difference at the supermarket where it came from, can you? And they make so many products out of rice, for instance. It costs several hundred thousand yen to rebury waste in a single case, but I'm telling now the Ministry of Environment has not allowed funds to be used for the reburying of such waste. It's a premise that is supposed to be stored for only a short period of time. Separately, decontamination work has also been carried out in prefectures besides Fukushima, extending to 57 municipalities in seven prefectures, including Tachigi and Miyagi. The amount of contaminated soil in these cases stands at about 320,000 cubic meters. In about 95% of the cases, the, the soil is stored on site. They moved people back into these nuclear wastelands already. Only a tiny fraction of people were got moved back in. They the rest wouldn't go. They said, well, we don't trust the government, thank goodness. New minister vows to tackle tainted soil in Fukushima. We got a date on that one? September 12, 2019. Genuine trust will be created after a promise is fulfilled. Yuchibori. Is that Yuchibori? Yeah, that's Yuchibori, all right. Look at him. That despicable creature to your left. He's the governor of Fukushima now, right? But the first 72 hours, he'd done nothing but interviews, telling everybody there's no meltdown, there's no issues, nuclear safe, clean, green. Disposing of Fukushima contaminated soil. 2018, how to dispose of the contaminated bags. Fukushima Diachi. Is she see a 20 kilometer radius? The red is the so called no go zone. We call it, well, by its real name, nuclear wastelands. But the whole country is one big nuclear wasteland. This is Akuma and Futaba, where this is the radioactive soil. They're cutting the bags open and they're just spreading the soil out in the farmland and they're going to grow food in it or something and ship it worldwide. That's the plan. And we we attacked them relentlessly for weeks at a time when you were talking about this. It's everywhere. It's easier to find a one-ton bag of radiation than a bumblebee. Nuclear scumbag doesn't quite... Like, these people are not even wearing six-foot-thick uh, suits to protect them. An industry of scum and degenerates and monsters. And, and in reality, these are idiots. And so what they're doing here is, I hate this. This is where they're shaking, they're dumping the bags and shaking it for rocks and separating that and, and releasing that back into the environment, the radioactive rocks. But they're taking the wood and anything they can burn and putting it in the incinerators on site and burning it. And there's a couple of people died on that site from just the harsh environment. Right, it splits the bag open and then it gets, once it gets rid of the like branches and leaves and grass, and they burn that in the incinerator. That's how they're reducing it, right? And now they're just going to dump it in the nuclear wasteland itself. The no -go, so-called no-go zone, which is within sight of the nuclear meltdowns, and grow food on it. The reactors are still hemorrhaging radiation out of it. This industry is determined to wipe you out, and it will succeed. It will wipe out all species. This, this industry contaminates soil. The industry hits your guts. And they even have these public meetings where... The suits get there, and the people ask him legitimate questions, and he basically says, look, go read the book. So far, only about 2.4 million square meters of soil, 17% of the total planned volume have been transferred to a temporary storage site. There's currently 105,000 on-site storage locations throughout the prefecture. Well, remember I showed you earlier, um, there's nine prefectures that were just as contaminated. 
Because the numbers we get are just Fukushima Prefecture. Remember that, too. I forget it myself sometimes. There are conspicuous objects covered by green sheets found in parking lots in front of houses. And these are one-ton bags of radiation. They even got a little berm around the base of it, allegedly going to keep the rain. Because the rain just finds its way in. These bags are only meant to last a couple of years at most. To avoid increasing radioactivity around these on-site locations, the contaminated soil is buried, surrounded by sandbags. The authority says keep it safe. Residents remain uneasy. If you live anywhere in Fukushima and you see that, you need to move out of there immediately. Or anywhere in Japan. You see bags like that stored, you need to get out of Dodge. And if you're keeping your child there, you should be charged with child abuse. We feel uncomfortable having to contaminate a soil around our homes. Uncomfortable. You, you got to leave. You can't stay in that environment. It's airborne. It plans to transfer the soil containing less than 8,000 becks per kilogram to be used on the roads and in building levees, not only in Fukushima, but all over Japan. Why not? They took billions of pounds of nuclear waste, grinded it up, and burned it in incinerators all across the country. There was an incinerator in Tokyo, in Guma, rather, right alongside of Tokyo, where three people had heart attacks in one day at the incinerator because of so much radiation that they were burning. The ministry is testing its recycling method at a facility in Minamasoma. Last December, the ministry announced that the process would allow up to 99% of the contaminated soil to be reused. 99%. This is how evil this industry actually is. And the whole nuclear industry worldwide applauded them. Only 1% of the current volume of contaminated soil will have to be permanently dis disposed of. 99% will be used somewhere else. The ultimate betrayal. Because as soon as you stop looking, this is what they end up doing. This is the norm. And they've been doing this for their entire 80-year legacy. In Lydia, the contaminated soil has been buried under fields where they've grown food above it. This, all of this was inconceivable pre-Fukushima. We would never, under any circumstance, which means Japan is a, a failed society, right? Japan is a stupid, stupid, complacent society. That could never happen in Canada, United States. There'd, it would be war. Wouldn't be a fucking nuclear scientist left on the planet if that happened over here. Rain will soak the ground. Besides this road, there's a river that carries water for farming, for the rice fields, a town, and a school were worried the contaminated water would leak. And every time I heard the word leak, I just want to pull someone's fucking throat out. Last April, the ministry held an information center I was stationed in Fukushima at the time and covered the event. The ministry initially banned the press, but the residents persuaded the representatives to change that decision. What followed was an exchange we recorded. The ministry initially banned the press. They got nothing to hide, obviously. Let's ban the press. It's final disposal, isn't it? It's not like you're going to dig it up again and move it elsewhere, said the residents. The environmental ministry said... We have different plans for final disposal and reuse. This is reuse. Resident, but you're describing the same thing twice. You're just playing with words. If the soil is safe, why not use it for public work construction projects for the Tokyo Olympics? He said the biggest concern was how burying the contaminated soil in their crop would harm the area's reputation. Instead of the biggest concern is you're going to poison people. Forever by grown food in a nuclear wasteland. The epitome of evil is silence. After testing was cancelled, the ministry decided to use the contaminated soil to widen expressway in Minamasoma, which is a big, stupid nuclear wasteland. But at an information center earlier this month, a number of residents expressed opposition to the plan. Verifying the safety of the recycled contaminated soil will take time. 
will take time, eh? I, I can't comprehend why do you got to be so evil? Why do you hate us so much? Why do you have this incredible amount of contempt for us and everybody else and all the species? I can't comprehend it. But I can assure you I have a thousand times the contempt for them that they do for everybody else, and they have unmitigated contempt for everything on this planet. Verifying the safety of the recycled, recycled contaminated soil. Recycled. This, this wasn't even conceivable pre-Fukushima, those words. The question of how to dispose of contaminated soil is not limited just to Fukushima. The same scenario is playing out in seven other prefectures, Iwati, Miyagi, Ibarati, Tichigi, Guma, Asetama, and Chiba. So all of these prefectures have the same attributes as Fukushima. They have endless bags everywhere. And the numbers we're fed constantly are Fukushima's. But in reality of it is, you should be considering all the other prefectures. Right? Does that make sense? To describe the people as maniacs, I don't think really does it justice. But because we've been covering it so long, and we've seen uh, so much of this unbelievable contempt for everything and everybody, Salt from Fukushima to be reused, work to be reused in new farmland. <laughs> I got so many of these stories I can't possibly cover them all, unfortunately. But they're exceptionally good at being evil. Ministry of Val's response to Fukushima reputational damage. Reputational damage. So acknowledging that you had an accident now is considered reputational damage. It's never too late, it's never too late to win, okay? At some point the world will fight back. Why not start now? Because at some point you're gonna, you're gonna, you're being forced to fight back. You're being forced to fight back. That's all I got for you tonight. I have a long, difficult day. I think I would describe it as a brutal day. I'm just from 7 a.m. this morning until 4 a.m. I'm brutal day for me. We still got a show in. Scumbag Nuke here. Uh, Stephen Young uh, donated another 50, thank goodness. I know the industry is paying attention, so I'm hesitant to say what happened today. And so I won't. I'll talk about it some other day in the near future. Because I can't avoid it in a couple of weeks anyway. We'll see everybody, hopefully tomorrow night. Great day, great day tomorrow. Hugs for everybody, and friends and families and loved ones. Appreciate everybody finding time, energy, and effort to see the, another narrative of this terrible story and this Fukushima that we know things. And you're destroying everybody's future. At some point, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to stand up. At some point, they're gonna force you to stand up. There's no sense waiting. Take care, everybody.